Hello again folks, Cyclops here from Overclock.net So yeah, I finally decided to completely change everything and I've set up a simple water cooling loop Basically took the original IHS off 3770K and uh, just mounted the CPU directly under the heatsink so the bare core is touching the water block and this is the retention bracket and uh, whatever else comes with it I detached it, so that was the only way you could make proper contact with the CPU die or the heatsink on top of the die uh, so yeah let's just go over the components, uh, this is a new motherboard I just received it's an ASUS uh, Sabertooth Z77 the memory is 8 gigs of DDR3 2400 megahertz G skill. It's 8 gigs 2 times 4. I got another 8 gigs uh, I haven't put in just because I want to keep things simple. Uh, yeah, the, the thing, notice this uh, little piece of tissue. I just put it there. I, 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 was, I saw a drop of water. I, I thought uh, I'd just be over cautious and just put something there. When I touch it and it's still completely dry, it's very absorbent material, so I'm not really worried about any damage to the motherboard. Hard drive, one terabyte, just in digital, just for boot. Graphic card, uh, ASUS ENGTX, or EN8400GS, just for the display. I mean, I could have used the onboard graphics, but I didn't have, I, I mean, I don't have the HD, uh, HDMI cable, uh, capable monitor, or uh, one that uses this whiteboard. Uh, pump and res are, it's just a very simple water cooling loop. Uh, pump and res, it's XSPC H20200 or something like that. It's a 200 liter per hour uh, pump. It's the cheapest you can buy, it's about 40 bucks. The pump and res, that's like, uh, for a budget build. But you know, it doesn't have much pressure, so uh, I try to maintain straight lines as much as possible. Just use a straight and went straight to the water block. I should say straight. Uh, Compression fitting then went straight to the water block with a 45 degree fitting. Uh, I just wanted to uh, keep the maximum pressure around the water block so the heat wouldn't build up at all. Then it's a uh, 1 times 240 uh, EK radiator, 45 uh, millimeters thick. Not the best, but it's what I had in hand. And, uh, it's pretty overkill for even a you know, single CPU loop, especially with the one as efficient as this. Fans are uh, Corsair, something I actually don't know. They're on push right now. It's massive. a lot of air coming through. I'm pretty sure you guys can hear it. These are the same fans that run on uh, or come with the Corsair H100. I think they're exact same as the H80. But the H80, I'm not sure. Yeah, they're the same fan, 2700 RPM. A little bit a lot of air, kind of noisy. It's what I had in the in hand to uh, test things out. Power supply is, I know it's upside down or. Uh, uh, you guys can see your ring. It's a Silverstone SD1200 watt, and uh, yeah, a lot of power for what I'm about to do here. All right, so that's about that. Let's get into the software part. So, well, you know, Windows 7, 64-bit. That seems to be the what everybody uses these days. So, what I did uh, first of uh, I'm. The previous test that I did was with the H50, so the results are going to be, of course, off. But, uh, what was I going to say? Right, the, uh, the motherboard had slightly different settings than the Maximus 4 that I used. As in, when I turned it to default, the uh, VID, or regular voltage, on stock would shoot to 1.15 volts as opposed to 1.1 with the original test so I set it manually to 1.1 uh, and I'm just going to start the tests so uh, weirdly I didn't, I didn't set XMP but the memory is running at 1600 but the timings are 11, 11, 11, 28 which isn't a problem it doesn't really matter in this test so yeah, uh, 3770K, 1.1 volts, and the idle temps are hovering around, well the average would be around 22, 23, 
the ambient is 25.7 pretty much the same as the last time I tested now I'm going to run large FFTs as always 10 minutes roughly CPU is 100% temperatures just about 50 I mean the hottest core is 50 the lowest is 41 excellent results I don't recall the exact res uh, the exact temperatures as I had before I think it was uh, the average was 55 with the heat sink mounted on top of the die using MX4 in this uh, instant I'm also using MX4 but the CPU die is directly underneath the block as I said before so you got maximum heat transfer and as you can see the temperatures are remarkable okay no point of me <laughs> babbling uh, so it's uh, about midnight uh, and I'll see you guys in 10 minutes alright guys it's been roughly 10 minutes uh, temperatures pretty cool the average is below 50 which is more than 5 degrees cooler than my test with the H50 and with the IHS on and now it's not really representative because a lot of variables changed and uh, but yeah voltage 1 point almost 1.1 1 .1, pretty much same as before and uh, I'm just gonna take a screenshot so doubters haters and say this is faked and time to start the test So yes, 12 minutes. I'll be back with the overclock profile loaded. Okay guys, uh, now we're at the final test. Uh, yeah, so 1.3 with, uh, I set at 1.315 and uh, set the LLC to the load line calibration to medium, so it'll drop to around 1.27. Trying to replicate the results uh, from the original test. Uh, memory, I know it doesn't play a role, I just like to state it. Same frequency, just tighter timings, 888-24. Temperature is idle. Not that impressive, but I'm pretty sure the load will be great. Uh, yeah, so about 25 average, 25, 26. Not important. We're here for the ultimate overclock. Right, so let's start the large FFT test of Prime 95. And CPU is 100% load. Huh, something wrong with the core time? Oh, there we go. It's good forever to refresh. Average. Well, I'm not sure if I should take average into consideration. The highest, the highest one is 63, the lowest is 52. If I remember correctly, the test I did with the H50, the overclock test, which uh, incidentally uses the same voltage almost, 1.27 there there, but this is using slightly more, ever so slightly. Uh, the hottest score got up to 77. I know the uh, test have an end, uh, we're not at the end of the test, but uh, okay, 64, uh, pretty impressive results. I'm, I'm really, I love this. All right, <laughs> I'll just be back in 10 minutes. All right, guys, uh, it's been 10 minutes looking at the temperatures 54 lowest 66 highest average I'm guessing around 62 63 it doesn't matter though I'll round up all the results at the end and give you guys a proper conclusion I'm just gonna stop this 10 minutes as we all can see and I'll be back with the proper screenshots all right guys the conclusion times uh, so I've uh, Put up all the screenshots of the relevant tests. These are the stock tests. Uh, from left to right, you've got the stock Intel thermal solution. In the middle, it's the one with the TIM replaced, but the IHS still on the core. And to the right side is uh, IHS completely removed and the uh, core directly in contact with the water block. Uh, it's a bit confusing since the first two tests uh, that are on the left were done on the H50 and the one on the right was done using a 
as you can see, uh, custom water loop. But I think uh, it should be enough. Now from left, uh, I've went over some of these and I'll just go over them again. Uh, I'm not going to go over the idle temperatures because they're really not relevant or accurate and depending on the sensors that your motherboard use or uh, the power savings that you've... I've turned off all the power savings but still there might be some settings in the motherboards that would uh, man manipulate the, uh, manipulate the uh, idle temperatures. Uh, it's not important anyways when you're overclocking. Uh, can't speak. Overclocking. So the one on the left, average temps, under load 56, the middle 54, under right, which is the water, 48.25. So it's 5.75 degrees cooler than the replaced temp and a whopping 7.75 degrees cooler than the original solution. I know that I've changed the dedicated water cooling, but that, that kind of shows you. Now, uh, these are the stock temps, I'm going to get rid of them and uh, go to overclock tests, 1.27 volts, uh, 4.2 gigahertz, just conservative clocks for the test, uh, uh, to be able to run the tests. Uh, same uh, same uh, ordering from left to right, 77.75 until stock, 72.75 with replace temp. And here's the kicker, 62 degrees for the removal of IHS and direct contact with the die. That's 10.75 degrees with the replaced TEM version and 15.75 degrees with the original Intel TEM. That speaks loads for the problem that the IHS and the TEM that Intel use has. It's, it's uh, 15.75 degrees, it's almost 16 degrees, and the ambience pretty much the same, it actually went up a bit, 26 degrees, around the 26, so it's a very big change. Uh, so again, Intel, you've been told, solder the thing, get rid of the TEM, be a good boy. I'm out, and I hope you've enjoyed these uh, series of boring videos from me. Out.